Hello, I'm John Coleman, and thank you for watching this presentation, which I've titled, There Is No Significant Global Warming. Now, I think you and I have this in common. We both love this planet Earth, and we think it's our highest responsibility as citizens of this planet to protect it from any damage as a result of our lives here. Now, we are being told that we are causing global warming, and that global warming is doing exactly that, making planet Earth unlivable. That's a very serious matter. The name of the crisis has been changed a lot, but the charge remains the same. We are destroying planet Earth. No matter what they call it, the entire basis of the crisis as they see it is this, the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere from the exhaust of our cars and airplanes, our power plants, our factories, everything that burns fossil fuels. This is it. Their entire scientific case is built on the greenhouse effect that they say skyrockets from the increasing amount of CO2, carbon dioxide, in the atmosphere. Now let me make something very clear, here and now. If they were correct, in fact, if there was any reasonable chance that they were on target, I would devote the balance of my life to working to stop the emission of carbon dioxide into the air. But I have seriously studied the science behind their claims, and I find their claims to be entirely wrong. I am totally convinced that there is no significant man-made global warming. This is an amazing and very upsetting case of science gone bad. How can something like this happen? Well, I'm going to try to explain it as clearly and completely as I can. But here's where all of this gets really messy. Environmentalists and politicians have adopted the global warming frenzy to advance their agendas, and they use it to promote their solutions to global warming, alternate energy, and a change to a less industrialized civilization. And so they say that I am just a Republican, that I'm picking on their hero, Al Gore, and that undoubtedly I'm on the payroll of big oil. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friend, my interest is not political. I am not being paid by big oil or anybody else to campaign against this global warming frenzy. I'm just a longtime meteorologist, and I am very upset about my science being destroyed by a myth. I'm upset in response to these totally false scientific claims. The global warming advocates are trying to turn off the lights on our civilization, an advanced way of life that's the product of 2,000 years of solid science and engineering and hard work by all those before us. The global warming crowd wants to shut down our automobiles, no more taking the kids to school in the SUV, and they want to ground our airplanes, no more flights to Hawaii, and they want to shut down the factories that make our computers and our iPods and our iPhones and all that other neat stuff that makes life good. I do not want to turn off our fossil fuel-powered civilization to save us from the global warming crisis, and here is why. There is no crisis, but let me add, I am for clean alternate energy. I wish I had better news about that. The truth is that alternate energy is not yet up to the task of powering this civilization. We're going to have to depend on fossil fuels and the internal combustion engine for another 30 to 50 years. And by the way, the internal combustion engine is one of mankind's greatest inventions. Well, here's the good news. We can continue to live as we are today while we develop new energy sources, and new engines. We can do it just fine because we are not causing climate change by using fossil fuels. And please, don't worry about the polar bears. They are not endangered from global warming. That whole polar bears are dying campaign was simply a disgusting scare tactic. And the same is true for the polar ice. Our use of fossil fuels is not causing it to melt. And anyone who has lived on the coast for the last few decades knows that the claim about rising ocean water levels is also without merit. 
And more than that, those claims of record high worldwide temperature averages are based on cooked up data. There is no warming problem. So tell me, just what sort of temperature do you want for planet Earth? Do you want 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s? And how about the rainfall? Do you want a lot? Or would you like it to be drier and sunnier? Well, I think you and I can agree on this one. We want a natural climate, unaltered by the activities of our civilization. But there is something very important that you need to understand. The natural climate is not something that you can depend on. In fact, the climate of Earth has been anything but steady over time. Here's a chart. It goes back 400,000 years, and it shows how Earth has wildly vacillated between ice ages and what we call interglacial periods every 100,000 years or so. So which of these do you want? Well, obviously, we don't want either. We don't want an Earth covered by a thick coating of ice or a monstrous heat wave. But there are big swings in climate even during these interglacial periods. Look at the ups and downs since the last ice age ended about 12,000 years ago. Several natural instances of global warming and several many ice ages. Well, I think we can agree we would prefer the in-between, what we call normal climate. But we can't count on it. Even in the last thousand years, Earth has experienced both significant natural warm-ups and natural cold periods. And these swings had major impacts on the activities of mankind, including that warm 300 years when the Nordsmen were farming and raising grapes even on Greenland, which is now totally covered by ice. So we crave a steady, medium climate. It seems we shouldn't expect that to last for too many generations. We can just count ourselves very lucky that we have it for our lives. And just look at the natural swings in temperature over the last thousand years here. I want to ask you a question about this. How can we accept that those swings in temperature in the pre-fossil fuel centuries were natural, but that the increases of the last hundred years are the result of our release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. According to Al Gore and his friends, this chart proves the case for global warming. It shows the average temperature of Earth has risen since we've been using fossil fuels to power our civilization, releasing carbon dioxide exhaust into the atmosphere. The much ballyhooed increase is a whopping 1.5 degrees or so, maybe a little less, in the last 131 years. So if you look carefully, there's a 30-year period here where the CO2 increases, but the temperature falls. Oh, and here's another one. A 40-year period in the industrial boom years following World War II, when CO2 was rising rapidly, but temperatures held steady. These deviations are really important because they clearly illustrate the disconnect between CO2 and temperature. For 70 out of the 131 years, more than half the time in the age of fossil fuels, temperatures have not risen with the increase of CO2. Let me to make two points right here. An increase of 1.5 degrees in temperature over 131 years is not at all unusual in the long-term scheme of things and doesn't prove anything. And the second part is this. I accept without question that there has been a steady increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as a result of the burning of fossil fuels. I think that is well documented. The measurement of CO2 is good science, but it in no way proves the bad science of global warming. The CO2 has increased by about 20%, from 315 parts per million in 1958 up to 380 parts per million today. A lot of that comes from natural sources. The rest comes from fossil fuel exhaust. Science can actually identify which molecules are from the fossil fuels. Now, I need to make it absolutely clear that the increase in CO2 is accepted, not in dispute, but there is no proof of any connection between this increase and any significant increase in temperatures. 
And this is crucial because the entire global warming case is built on a claim of a direct connection between the CO2 and the temperature increases. So keep your eye on the ball, and you will realize that there continues to be a disconnect between CO2 and temperatures. This disconnect showed up again in the first decade of the 21st century when the CO2 continued to increase while temperatures leveled off and even fell measurably. Now let me emphasize, this recent increase in temperatures during the age of fossil fuels is not significant in the long-term picture. Temperatures have risen and fallen for natural reasons throughout history and ha has been warmed up many times, much warmer than it is now, numerous occasions before fossil fuels. Our ancestors did not cause the medieval optimum, nor did they cause the Little Ice Age. Unless you can prove an important connection between warming and CO2, we're not causing any problem now. The global warming frenzy peaked in the early 1990s when this chart was published. It totally eliminated all those historic fluctuations in temperature and greatly increased the modern warming. The chart became known as the hockey stick chart, and it was said to prove global warming was real and a major problem. In 1995, it was the centerpiece of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report. But before long, skeptical scientists had proven that it was without merit. They showed that the formula that Dr. Michael Mann had concocted to produce this chart would produce a hockey stick-shaped chart regardless of the input data. And this was the first real indication that the scientists promoting global warming were falling short of scientific proof of their theory. Let me show you a quick example of the problem with the claim that it's never been warmer than it is now. Here in North America, the all-time temperature record was set back in the Dust Bowl days of 1934. The all-time record, South America, 1920. Australian record, 1960. Europe, 1978. But Asia, 1942. And Africa, 1922. Not a single continental high temperature record has been set in the last 33 years. When Dr. Mann, Al Gore, and the United Nations and the National Weather Service et al. have kept telling us that we're having the warmest years ever.